Welcome to My on Mondays, an explorative approach to the possessive my through narratives, art, and sound. Each Monday brings a new creation and unique perspective. My on Mondays is brought to you by Ming Studios, a contemporary art space and international artist residency program dedicated to the exhibition, experience, and exploration of arts and culture. Along with exhibiting artists from around the world, Ming also serves the community by hosting innovative programs including performances, workshops, screenings, readings, artist talks, and other cultural activities. For more information or if you'd like to participate in Maya on Mondays, you can visit our website at mingstudios.org. Hello and welcome to Maya on Mondays. Today, as part of our artist interview series, I'm speaking with Teal Gardner, an interdisciplinary artist and teacher living and working in Boise, Idaho, where she's resided since 2016. She's also a previous contributor to My on Mondays. Her piece, titled My Not Bog, is episode 13 in our archives. In our conversation today, we're discussing her current endeavor, the Ecogeoglyphic Observatory, otherwise known as the Egg a project that explores the curious dynamics of present-day industrial development in the region surrounding Boise and the effects that this process has over the plants, animals, water, stone, soil, and people who exist here. For the project, Teal is enlisting field workers, both artists and otherwise, as she says, to intentionally observe, document, explore, research, and dream. She has launched the project with an exhibition currently on display at Ming Studios until November 12th. I guess my first question is, just so that people have a sense of who you are and mm -hmm. what motivates you to do the things that you do, how would you describe yourself as an artist? Mm. Okay, well, yeah, my name is Teal Gardner, and I am based out of Boise, Idaho. Um, I guess as an artist, my approach is land and sort of ecosystem based. I have traditionally worked in social practice. So bringing people into my projects and making space for them. And then also in sculpture, um, ceramics, installation, video, and some sound work too. So I'm very multidisciplinary. To... Yeah, yeah, so multidisciplinary. But I'm finding that um, it's really great to have, for me, to have um, a pretty big scope of the tools that I can use for my work because the to, to like to apprehend, you know, ecosystem dynamics is um, a big ask. And I think that the more tools I have in my pocket to use, um, the better I can tell the types of stories or invite the types of questions that I'm looking for. Okay, that's that's great. Um, and that leads me into a question that I have later. But first, I um, so today the focus of our conversation is your current project, the Eco Geoglyphic. I said that right, didn't I? Observatory. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, I, I'll start by reading your brief intro on the web page and you say the ecogeoglyphic observatory fondly referred to as the egg is a project that explores the curious dynamics of present day industrial development in the region surrounding boise and the effects that this process has over the plants animals water stone soil and people who exist here and um so to start with can you give us your definition for ecogeoglyphic yeah, it's a fun word that I made up, and it came out of a series of conversations um, about kind of what my art was doing and kind of framing the way that I've been looking at things. Mm -hmm. So it was a term coined out of three parts. The first part is eco, um, and that is referring to the ancient Greek term oikos, which is about our home place, um, and then geo is looking at the earth like the physical material of the earth and then glyphic is to write or to inscribe into stone so those are mm -hmm. all 
ancient Greek antecedents that I'm just putting into this new um, framework together to talk about what we're making kind of as a culture or as a society that carves its way through landscapes. Um, mm -hmm. I love, I love how you say on the webpage, our lines erase their webs. And it, I, I mean, I think it really evokes your personal connection to the natural world mm -hmm. and how we impose ourselves on it. And yeah, um, yeah it gives it a really personal feel so i mean i i'm curious to know you're not from idaho mm -hmm. originally you're yeah. from nebraska and yeah. how long have you lived here i i moved here in 2016 okay and um yeah i really like that you brought that up because i definitely grew up in a heavily industrial agriculture environment Mm -hmm. You know, everybody thinks corn when they think Nebraska, mm -hmm. and that means um, existing in, you know, geometric fields that are irrigated by machines. And um, there, the thing that I didn't really know was missing from my life was uh, this sense of expansiveness that Idaho features in terms of its wild places mm -hmm. and living in Boise I mean it feels like you're you know just slammed right up next to that in the neighborhood that I live I I see um, just evidence of that that flow space between the city and what extends to become you know mountain ranges that lead to Canada and mm -hmm. so just thinking about these um, interesting boundaries that exist on a map, but for plants and animals, um, those, those boundaries don't really exist. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, I think moving here uh, brought out in me a, an, a really more deeply felt appreciation for what we would call the natural world um, that I've sunk into over these past, you know, six years, seven years. Um, and that, that totally influences the work that I'm doing now. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. And so for, for the project that you're working on, on now at the egg, um, mm -hmm. as you say, uh, you're looking for field workers to build a project together with people living in the Boise Valley. In mm -hmm. it, we intentionally observe, document, explore, research, and dream. So what does that look like? What does the field work actually entail? Yeah. So just to back up a little bit, the project that I am showing at Ming Studios right now is what I would say like my response to the prompt of the eco geoglyphic and um it contains views and observations and approaches that i've taken um that kind of house that prompt but mm -hmm. i'm really really interested in how other people are observing um and feeling and experiencing the curious dynamics that i referred to before something that i noticed in just talking with friends and neighbors and picking up on things in Boise um, is that development is a huge issue that everyone is metabolizing in some way throughout their lives. And we, as um, I think we, as people and as a community of neighbors in this, in this place, like exp being expansive about Boise and beyond, like, I, I would like us to be able to have a sense of agency within what can feel like unmovable industrial uh, or infrastructural or capitalist systems that um, most of us have, you know, really no impact over, mm -hmm. um, although it, infl it inflects itself in our lives in so many ways. And so the field worker, you know, is anyone who re relates to the loss of landscape that they prize or that they're connected to, um, or they're experiencing, you know, rent increases that they can't afford, or they're, you know, furious and terrified to lose friendships as people 
are being pushed out by the increasing cost of living Mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, there's just so many entry points. So what I'm hoping for is that people who become field workers take a, a personal account of their own experience of this and then start to follow that thread into yeah. their own version of the eco-geoglyphic prompt. So um, field workers at this point have been meeting um, on Wednesdays at my studio, which we can call the observatory, and um, talking about what they're seeing. Um, some people have been making, you know, ideas for projects or we're getting donations of books or lent books that help to shore up the thinking on the project and bring in more voices. Mm -hmm. Um, Field workers can set up a field uh, field studies excursion. Um, Like on Sunday, we're going to be taking an excursion to the Snake River uh, Canyon to hike across the Swan Falls Dam and check out the petroglyphs on the south side of the river. Mm-hmm. So um, so these the field workers have a lot of different opportunities to be involved in the project. And I'm also really interested in facilitation myself of field worker experiences to help mm-hmm. people frame maybe more clearly their own response. So I'm working on building more of those prompts and frameworks that people can simply step into and and have a way forward so okay. it's really quite open but i'm working on um tightening it down a little bit so yeah. people know how to be involved yeah that that sort of answers part of my next question which was um what it you know what the end game is for the project and if you had a specific oh, yeah. plan and time frame or was yeah. it more open-ended like an exploration to see what flowers as people immerse themselves in the in the field mm-hmm. work well I love that you had asked the question about like how what could flower among all of us um, mm-hmm. I do have a specific end goal of in March of 2023 putting an like, kind of a bookend on this period of the observatory and okay. inviting people who are participating as field workers to alongside me exhibit things in Ming Studios. So um, we're looking forward to kind of having that as a placeholder and as a as a moment in time where we can share what okay. we've been observing. Um, but I love the idea that it could um, continue to flower for people beyond just um, having a final show. Yeah, great. Um, you're a teacher for One Stone in Boise. Yeah. And so I'm curious, are any of your students involved or is this something that you've actually, um, actively, uh, what's the word combined with, with what you're teaching? Mm. Yeah, I think, so I had a group of students come into the gallery last week <clears throat> and, and, um, they created like a pretty rapid response and we made a video um and i that was the first time that i've brought students in for a process there Hmm. but it's very open to people of all ages and um i think that this the students at my workplace are often like so uh surprising and incredible in the ways that they can bring in their own stories and have have the ability to make such uh intuitive and uh like revealing connections between things so i would love to work with them more but this yeah this uh shuffle between putting on the show and organizing the egg and kind of managing that stuff hasn't left me a ton of space to build it into other curriculum but Mm -hmm. I definitely see the opportunity there and love the love the prompt to keep doing that with with the students because they they adored that experience of working on a video together and the video will be shown um at the closing on November 12th too yeah that that sounds really great I mean especially because when I think of people that age, I, 
I feel like teenagers specifically so often they reach this age when they suddenly feel sort of shut out of their environment like mm. like children are often included in so much and sort of nurtured and coddled and then and then they reach a certain age and it's like teenagers sort of on their own form their own world but also they're just sort of not really respected, I feel like, as yeah. as um, contributing members of mm -hmm. the environment that they're living in. And so mm -hmm. this strikes me as a way to really um, allow them to engage directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And ultimately, the world that's, from my view, shifting really rapidly um, with a lot of physical change in the landscape here mm -hmm. is the world that they're coming into and yeah, yeah. where they're going to have to, you know, become participants um, either in renting places or making decisions about where they're going to live. And this is their home. So, mm -hmm. you know, they have, I think, some of the most legitimate stories to tell about coming into um, coming. Yeah. Coming of age in a place where, they might not feel they belong in two or three years when they yeah. get out on their own and they're looking for um, what to do with themselves. Yeah. So, and I've also really appreciated the sort of keenness of the observations that they shared in um, that short facilitation that we did on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, as an educator, I have been working with this group of students um, for quite some time in sensitizing to landscape and using, um, you know, a broad perceptive apparatus to ground yourself and to figure out what senses you're using and how you're engaging with landscape. And then also learning about the details of this ecosystem that we live in here. Mm -hmm. So they came in some ways primed after years of working with me and other people at One Stone who are really environmentally oriented as um, educators as well, which gave them a good, I think, like starting point. Great. I guess my last question is, is it still possible to, you know, so for listeners, if they're interested in becoming involved, is it is it a closed group now? I mean, was there a time limit to sign up? No. Um, okay. I think I've been sort of responding to the ways that the time that it takes for people to understand a concept yeah. and sort of bring it into their awareness and then be able to have an idea or a response. Um, so I think initially I was considering having it open for seven cohort members to join me and be sort of the most involved, which I would still really love that. But I'm also just keeping the field worker opportunities open for drop-ins on Wednesdays at any time, well, when we're open. And then for people to join um, field studies, which will always be made public through the Ming website and my website. Mm -hmm. And um, for project ideas um, at any point, or even just conversations and hikes, like I think there's so much value in just getting even a brief glance into someone else's view yeah. that I'm really open to almost anything. Um, but I would like people to in some way capture their own view of these things, um, you know, through some of the prompts that I'm providing online or through talking with me so that we can all kind of have a shared vocabulary for how we discuss this stuff, which can hopefully deepen our collective understanding of it. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you yeah. so much for oh, yeah. your explanation <laughs> and, and just for sharing and and creating something that is, is such a meaningful way to create community and to sort of explore a, a, a deeper level of what's happening around mm -hmm. us all the time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And I feel like um, I, I just want to like really share with listeners that 
you don't have to consider yourself an artist to participate in this project in okay, any way. Great. Like I really, really emphasize <laughs> that people come with their own lenses and experience and the more diversity that comes to a group, the better and more uh, nuanced and interesting that group will be. Um, so I really want it to feel accessible to people, though I hope they'll forgive me like the long, <laughs> hard to pronounce name. That's just <laughs> that's just something that <laughs> I really enjoyed playing with that word. So you can call it the egg and just um, consider it that. But I'm looking for people who just feel compelled by these questions and want to be involved. Great. And so yeah. all of all of the information can be be found on the Ming website and I'll provide links for that as well with this podcast. Thank Wonderful. you so much, Teal. Yeah. Um, Rebecca, thank you. And just a big shout out to the Ming crew who, who have been super supportive through this whole process. Yeah. I just couldn't thank you all enough. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, take care. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. We're so glad you joined us today. We look forward to bringing you more episodes in the Mondays to come.